We are now almost three years into this pandemic. Every government on earth knows how prevalent and severe long COVID is. And if they are choosing not to uh, uh, distribute that information, it is deliberate misinformation on the risk of infection. Uh, my name is Charlie McCone. I live in San Francisco and I am a long COVID patient uh, and advocate. Well, I, when I first got sick, I was um, 30 years old and I've now been 32 and I've been you know, disabled for my entire 30s with this condition. Uh, my symptoms are were, were at first primarily cardiorespiratory and were severe, it's severely debilitating feeling. It's not like, oh, I'm out of breath. It feels like there's constantly, um, you know, a giant weight on a crushing weight on your chest and it is so difficult to breathe. Um, and the second year I started to develop much more uh, fatigue and cognitive issues. And so, yeah, it's changed my, my life and kind of every way imaginable. You know, I'm completely housebound. Um, I can no longer work. I can do about two things a day of like meaningful, you know, significance. So I can, you know, do this and then maybe time for like one other thing in my day. And then otherwise I just don't have the uh, capacity. My The gas just completely runs out for me. And I just, I can't think, I can't, uh, you know, uh, stand, sit up and it's really, difficult. And so I rely on my partner as a full-time caretaker to, you know, make me food, to help uh, do my laundry, do all the cooking and cleaning. I can only really bathe myself, but even in the shower, I can't stand up. And I haven't stood up in a shower since uh, 2020. We need support for people who are sick right now. You know, I uh, had to stop working. I uh, luckily qualified for short-term disability um, in my state, uh, which uh, many states do not even offer. I've exhausted that short-term disability and I have now uh, no options really. Right now I, I, I talked to a social worker and she said, I said, Can, should I apply for long-term disability? She said, I wouldn't even try. You're too young. They'll never accept you. I said, well, what am I supposed to do? I can't go back to work. Am I just supposed to go homeless? And she said, that's actually the most common, uh, one of the most common uh, reasons for homelessness in this country is that we don't have uh, support for folks in this condition. In the U.S. in particular, we're seeing higher rates probably because we have fully embraced unmitigated spread. Uh, we don't already have great access to health care for marginalized communities. We don't have great access um, to, uh, for, to social you know, a disability benefits. However, this is a phenomenon that's happening in almost, almost every country you know, on, on earth. And uh, it's just particularly highlighted, you know, in, in, in the, the developed, um, you know, Western world where we should be able to handle this. We should be able to uh, uh, manage this and, and we're not. Right now, uh, this is a once, you know, in a century pandemic and uh, almost what is it, like half of the world has been in infected or something like that or expected to be infected. And with the rates of long COVID that we're seeing and the the very high degree of disability that correlates with long COVID, um, it's unequivocally, it's, it's the greatest modern uh, uh, mass disabling event, you know, in, in history. And the fact that we're not treating it as such or even not recognizing it's such is only going to um, make this, you know, emergency, uh, you know, grow to just more, more dire straits.